Hello folks, welcome back to Spencer's Bookshelf in the sixth installment on my YouTube channel. Uh, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm very, very excited that you're here with me today. Um, we're going to be reviewing um, someone that I've looked up to for a long time, uh, Barack Obama's book from 2006, uh, it's The Audacity of Hope. Um, before I go into the book itself, firstly, I want to say again, thank you for joining. If you can, uh, please hit subscribe. Uh, I want to grow this YouTube channel. I want to get people reading. Um, I want to review books, uh, from multiple genres and different sort of disciplines so that people can get excited to read and, and things like that. And, uh, on that note, I am very, very excited to review... Barack Obama's second book, um, The Audacity of Hope. So just a bit of a backstory on Barack Obama. As you know, he was the 44th president of the United States from 2008 to 2016. Uh, he was uh, elected with a very resounding victory in 2008. Um, and then he won by a pretty large margin again in 2012 and uh, was a very central figure over the last number of years. Uh, don't really need to describe more. I'm pretty sure that we're all aware of Barack Obama. Uh, but what a lot of people may not be aware of is, is of his book that he wrote just before. Um, he actually wrote it just before he, he started running for president in 2008. Um, the book is it's an interesting book. He, he actually had a book before that called uh, Dreams of My Father, which is more biographical. This one was more of a book on his sort of philosophy. And... Um, just sort of where he wanted to take the country, what he felt the USA meant to him as a person, and where he feels the USA is at its best. So I'm going to do something that a lot of people are not going to be, or are going to be pretty surprised about, um, especially people who know me well. Because, okay, so I read this book in 2008, um, actually before he won, and... It was like the best book I ever read. It was probably one of the first books I read fully that wasn't for university at that time because I was in the last year of my university in 2008. Um, and I thought, I was like, oh, this guy's like the best of the best. So reading it again in 2020, um, as a 33 year old, um, probably quite a bit more mature human being, um, I actually was very surprised at how critical I was of some of his philosophy, some of his outlook, uh, and I will go into that. Uh, what I'll do first, though, is I'm just going to go into the basics of um, sort of the lessons he talks about in the book, and then I'm going to go into some of what I liked about the book, um, and then I want to talk a bit about some of what I didn't like, some of, the, some of my criticisms of this book. As I say that there's criticisms of the book, it is a very well-written book. It is a book I do think that you should read. Um, but I do think that with all books, we should have some element of uh, being critical, or some level of being critical, because that's how we grow as a human being. And to be honest, I'm initially I was like, oh, I might as well read it again. It wasn't really... Um, I wanted to read something sort of in this type of genre of biographical uh and i have a few other biographies but I, I thought you know what i'll read this book again and you know what i'm really happy i did um i mean my opinion of brock is not lowered i think he's an exceptional person um but some of his outlook uh especially in this day and age uh it's a little bit short-sighted i think and, and it's not um contradicts actually my personal impression of who I actually thought he was uh, on certain things, um, not in its, him in its entirety and things like that. So firstly, uh, again, I'll just note that he is, uh, he's a constitutional lawyer, president of Harvard Law Review before he was president. He's a very good writer. He's one of the best writers I've ever read in terms of just writing in general. Um, he does write this book as, I think, at like a grade 7 or grade 8 level. Uh, just because he want, wanted this to be written, or sorry, read by a very big uh, portion of the population, especially in the U.S. Um, so they're not, it's not like it's, he's writing in hyperbole and crazy uh, lingo and 
and things like that. Um, he does uh, very much write it very concisely to the point um, and very, very easy to understand. Um, it, was, it, it was a pleasure to read it, especially on that front itself. Okay, so let's go into the book itself. So basically, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't want it to be a severely long video, but he does have three major lessons that he talks about in the book. So first thing is about freedom and community uh, being the two central aspects within the USA. So freedom is sort of that libertarian sort of ideology where you're kind of, you're, you are your own silo. You're not, um, you, you don't want the government to be in your face. You don't want rules and restrictions to govern your life. You want to have some autonomy even in a country. And that's a big part of the U.S. But at the same time, he says, that plus community, the idea of us all being together and um, looking out for one another, looking out for thy neighbor, uh, is are two central aspects within American society. The second point that he talks about is politicians are forced um, to hang around people with lots of money. And this is, he's absolutely right. And this couldn't be talked about more. There's actually another book I read called Dark Money uh, recently, which uh, I actually might review. I, I, I would have to read it again because I, um, I just would have to in order to make a good video of it. Uh, but um, with the advent of Citizens United, um, which basically um, is an organization that ensures that we have things like super PACs in the USA, which means that basically unlimited amounts of money can be used to fund political campaigns, whether directly or indirectly. And that's an issue. My issue, though, is nothing was really done about it. Um, and to be honest, and I, I mean, I'm glad Obama was elected. I was a supporter of him in 2008. But John McCain, on the McCain-Feingold bill, which was uh, sometime in the mid-2000s, was, um, was actually a huge opponent of this and, and created, this, created a law in the Senate, him and a Democrat, Russ Feingold, who's the senator, I think, from Wisconsin, um, created a bipartisan bill to get money out of politics and to make it more like the Canadian system where you have contribution limits to political parties, things like that. So he talks about that in the book and the, the need for uh, money out of politics. The problem, nothing was really done. I mean, granted, there was a lot of other priorities, a lot of other things like healthcare, which he did, which was great. Um, but being a, a major aspect within this book, I was surprised that I didn't see any changes of that nature in his presidency. And that actually holds true to an interesting question about analyzing this book. Um, because he was president, because he was able to enact his uh, agenda and things like that, yes, granted, he had to get it through the Congress and Senate, it's just interesting to see what he, his philosophy was and then his governance was. So maybe part of my criticalness of the book is the fact that I understand a lot of his policies. I've, I've researched a lot of uh, what he's done and a lot of his laws that he's passed, a lot of uh, his economic reforms, which were great. Um, but there's a lot of his basic uh, fundamental truths that were not brought out in his presidency. And one of them was that um, campaign finance reform. Uh, the other one, too, that he talks about is the battle of we fight. So this is the third lesson. The battle we fight on a global scale today are the battles of ideas and therefore can't be won with weapons. I felt this was a very interesting um, thought process, and I, I agree with him. I do believe as in a globalized world, um, we as human beings, or not human beings, sorry, we as nations, are competing with each other more so based on economics and political systems. Um, we do live in a world where there's a lot of still totalitarian governments. Democracy is still is the preferred method among the, um, the G8 and the first world in terms of governance. Um, but um, I would say I, I 
probably should have had this uh, stat with me, but I, I would say that most countries um, do not practice democracy, or at least don't practice democracy to the level that um, a proper democracy should be put in place. So his thing is um, that we can stop wars and really fight things through uh, ideas. Um, I think that's great. Did he do that? He had the most drone strikes out of any president in history. Um, he did wrap up a lot of the Afghanistan war, things like that. But, um, and I'm not saying it was bad that he didn't end some of these wars at the time because it could have created more issues. But um, his philosophy, his lesson in this book that you can fight battles and ideas, or you can fight wars through ideas instead of through weapons. Uh, but nevertheless, I mean, comparative to other presidents, uh, I think he was a much more peaceful president than others. And hence why he got the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, actually, I think it was more so because he won as the first uh, black president. But um, so. I do want to talk about uh, a couple of criticisms. First, I'll talk about the broad aspects of these criticisms, and then I want to go into two quotes, and I want to that he talks about in the book, and what my thoughts are on that. So, the two sort of areas that I think um, that are the two realms that I want to concentrate on on my criticisms are where he talks about extremes of social, or he talks about extremes of social um, change being an, a problem and that anything can or things can only be changed through moderation. Uh, the second thing he talks about, which he talks about a lot, is American exceptionalism. And those are the two sort of broad theme topics that um, I'm very critical of. So first of all, I'll do a quote. Uh, he says, the conservative revolution that Reagan, Ronald Reagan, helped usher in gain traction because Reagan's central insight that the liberal welfare state had grown complacent and overly bureaucratic with democratic policymakers were obsessed with slicing the economic pie more than growing the economic pie. Uh, and he says that this gained a lot of truth. I disagree. I, and I, I wouldn't say I'm a hard left but I'm definitely not a hard right. Uh, I've studied economics on both sides, whether supply side, Keynesian. Uh, I've watched many lectures and videos on Margaret Thatcher, and also on the other side on with Tony Blair. And I kind of have a middle of the road insight or uh, ideology. But when it comes to saying that Reagan was right in terms of um, tearing down the liberal uh, bureaucratic state, I think is very uh, surprising to hear as a Democrat. Uh, I think that when you look at things like Social Security, it's always being brought down. When you look at things like healthcare, uh, when you look at um, many other uh, things that have been privatized over time. Um, that's not good. And that's what Reagan was trying to do by tearing down the democratic state. Uh, supply side economics, which really states like uh, taking out as much social programs as possible, allowing for, uh, through economic reforms, to do more um, uh, to gain growth through um, basically corporations doing better and having that trickle down to the workers is a load of, to me, a load of uh, you know what, because that doesn't exist. Workers are not going to get paid more because the corporation's getting paid more. They're going to get paid more because, um, from a pure economics point of view, because there's uh, protections in place for them to get paid more and the value to them, uh, to the corporation is higher. So um, I, when he talks about social extremes and social moderation, 
and Ronald Reagan through that quote. Ugh, not a huge fan. Uh, he also talks about American exceptionalism. And American exceptionalism is a very, very problematic thing. I mean, hence look today. So a lot of American exceptionalism in the government um, is your, uh, I mean, that's, that's neither here nor there, but I won't go too much more into that. But um, he says America, and this is his, the quote that I'm going to criticize, America is big enough to accommodate all their dreams. Um, is it? Uh, look at Alabama. Look at Mississippi. Do you think the African-American population there dreams are being met? Do you think that they have all the ability to go to the top as a rich um, person from from any race, from Massachusetts or one of those northeastern seaboard richer states? Um, I think it's a very naive statement and I think that um, also American exceptionalism is um, not something that um, I think is something that most people think is even true. Uh, I think there's a lot of issues with the American system. I mean, there is a lot of good. There's a lot that's come out of America, Silicon Valley, uh, with tech. Um, uh, a lot of diseases have been cured in the US, a lot of science and technology, engineering, things like that. Um, I think that's a great thing, but to say that everyone has equal opportunity if they just put their minds to it is not true. Um, there's not enough affirmative action to ensure that all people in every community will have the same shot. Uh, it's that sort of, it's a very actually conservative ideal where it's a quality of outcomes, or, or sorry, not, uh, it's a quality of opportunity versus a quality of outcomes. Um, He's sort of alluding to the more conservative ideal, which is um, opera, uh, ability for everyone to have the opportunity. But even still, not everyone has the opportunity to move up. And um, so on that note, I'm not a huge fan of this book. Um, I would give it maybe a three and a half out of five. It's well written. It's probably one of the best written books you'll ever read. Uh, but when you talk about uh, certain aspects, or when you read about certain aspects, it's, it's not, not my cup of tea. Anyways, we'll talk soon. Uh, thanks for tuning in today.